learners let's talk about polarization of light in this video here we are going to talk about the concept of polarization of light then we will discuss about the polarizers like nicol prism some of the properties uh, which are useful while having the applications of polarized light that is nothing but optical activity then we will see what is specific rotation and at last here in this video we will talk about lorentz half shade polarimeter suppose there is one source of light and we know that source of light gives you light in different or multiple directions but if that light which is traveling in different direction is passed through some materials like polarizing filters then you will find that light can propagate in a single direction or there will be restrictions for the propagation of light and ultimate result will be light will propagate in a single direction as we know light waves are uh, transverse electromagnetic waves that naturally vibrate in multiple planes perpendicular to their direction of travel polarization is the process of confining these vibrations to a single plane and as you may see here these vibrations are confined to a single plane producing what we call as a plane polarized light so polarization is the process of converting unpolarized light into a polarized light so we can say that the phenomenon of restrictions of the vibrations of light waves in a particular plane perpendicular to the direction of propagation of wave motion is called as polarization of light this remarkable phenomenon was first systematically observed by french physicist etienne louis malus in 1808 while studying light reflections through calcite crystals to get polarized light as i have specified polarizing filters or polarizers are required one of the polarizer which is used in the polarization study is nothing but the nicol prism nicol prism is made up with calcite crystal with some specific arrangement and uh, the important thing is that this could be used to convert unpolarized light into polarized one while doing this uh, nicol prism uses the phenomenon of double refraction in double refraction two kinds of rays are used e ray and o ray out of that o ray component could be reflected by the canada balsam layer provided here and only one form of propagation of light rays will be passed in terms of e ray the detailed video about the construction and working of nicol prism will be shared with you so keep in mind nicol prism could be used as a polarizer in the polarization of light and at the same time to measure the amount of polarization it could be used as a an analyzer so nicol prism could be used as a polarizer and analyzer in the polarization study the next thing that we are going to talk about is the optical activity up to this point we have seen the light source could give you light in a different directions that we have seen earlier now if you pass that unpolarized light through some polarizing filter what will happen you will get light which is propagating in a single direction means unpolarized light will get converted into polarized one now if you pass that polarized light through some substances which are termed as optically active substances then you will see there will be rotation in the propagation of light the light will change its path or it will rotate 
through some angle theta and this particular thing is termed as optical activity there are certain substances which possesses the remarkable ability to rotate the plane of polarized light as it passes through them this property reveals the molecular chirality and three dimensional structure of compounds with the help of analyzer you may measure the amount of polarization at the last so optical activity is the ability of substance to rotate the plane of polarization of a beam of a light that is passing through it here are the sum of the substances which shows the optical activity like there is a turpentine sugar solution sodium chloride sodium chlorate and quartz there could be certain kinds of solid materials and some liquids which can show optical activity or the materials are termed as optically active substances now in which direction there is a rotation of uh, plane polarized light that is also seen so if light have their propagation in a clockwise direction or to the right hand side then the optical activity is termed as dextro rotatory activity or the substances are termed as dextro rotatory substances if the rotation of light is through the left hand side or if that is in anti clockwise direction then substances are termed as levo rotatory substances and generally dextro rotatory substances are denoted with the plus sign and levo rotatory substances are denoted with the minus sign now the theta that is the amount of rotation or angle of rotation is dependent upon certain uh, parameters so theta produced in a particular substance if that is a solid one then that theta is proportional to the thickness it is directly proportional to the thickness of that solid material so here you may see theta is directly proportional to t which is nothing but thickness of that substance if we are talking about uh, liquid optically active substances then theta will be equal to or uh, theta will be directly proportional to c into l where c is nothing but the concentration of the solution l is the length containing solution and if we remove the proportionality sign then that we have to insert one constant which is nothing but s s stands for spe specific rotation here the intensity of optical activity is expressed in terms of a quantity called specific rotation and from the previous equation we can say that the specific rotation is related to the angle through which the plane is rotated then it is dependent upon the length of the light path through the sample and it is dependent upon the concentration of the solution or density of the sample so basically that s is equal to 10 theta divided by say cl uh, we can define specific rotation as the rotation produced by 1 decimeter length of the solution containing 1 gram of the optically active substance per cc of the solution so formula for s becomes 10 theta divided by cl whatever information we have gathered up to this point related to the polarization of light its application is seen with the help of lorentz half shade polarimeter so how is the construction of that lorentz half shade polarimeter that we will see first we have seen as we are talking about the polarization of light will require a light source uh, next to the light source a convex lens is placed uh and of course light source will give you the unpolarized light which is propagating in a different direction next to the convex lens here the nicol prism is placed and uh, it is a nicol prism number 1 uh, which could be used as a pol polarizer and unpolarized light will get converted into polarized light 
with the help of that nickel prism as the title is lorentz half shade polarimeter here in this construction there will be one half shaded plate a glass plate which is covered on the half portion and half will be the glass as it is next to the half shaded plate uh, there will be the optically active solution containing tube whenever unpolarized light will get pass through optically active substance there will be some change in its angle of propagation that angle is nothing but angle theta in a uh, lorentz half shade polarimeter another component is nothing but analyzer which is nothing but another nickel prism nickel prism number 2 to measure this angle theta angle theta here the circular scale is provided and at last you will find the eyepiece which is uh, used to observe the circular scale and to observe the light which is passing or traveling through nickel prism half shaded plate optically active substance and analyzer at last photograph of uh, lorentz half shaded polarimeter of course we have to have this polarimeter with some source of light so this is the actual construction and block diagram we have seen earlier now uh, with the help of lorentz half shaded polarimeter either you may calculate the specific rotations of different kinds of substances or if uh, specific rotations are known you can calculate concentration of the substances into the solution so for that purpose uh, when you look through lorentz half shaded polarimeter as light is passing through half shaded plate you will find half portion of our view is dark one and half portion is bright one if we change the analyzer through some angle you may find that there could be a situation where the bright portion will get converted into dark and dark portion will get converted into bright while having this flip in the situation there will be one middle point where there will be the complete intensity over the entire view there will be full brightness over the entire view and you have to measure theta at that particular places if with the help of lorentz half shaded polarimeter as you, you can see here we may calculate amount of theta if c is known l is known because there will be the uh, tube in your hand to measure the length of that tube so uh, with these parameters with known theta c and l you can calculate specific rotations of any kind of optically active substances so this is the application of lorentz half shaded polarimeter basically lorentz half shaded polarimeter is used in some uh, industries for the calculation or in sugar industry for the calculation of sugar content into the solution or in some beverages related company where the concentration of the uh, solution plays the important role so in this video we people have seen uh, polarization of light uh, terminologies uh, which are useful in the polarization that is nothing but nickel prism optical activity and specific rotation and at last we have talked about the uh, lorentz half shaded polarimeter which gives you real time applications of the which gives the applications of the polarization concept in a real life so this is all about polarization of light if you are having any doubt feel free to convey that to me you can put your queries and questions in the comment box thanks for watching thank you again okay.